Alright, this mini lecture is on an idea called the work energy theorem. And I'm going to talk to you about it both as a conceptual idea and also mathematically. Like, does the concept, that kind of intuition about this work from a mathematical perspective and from the laws of physics that we've been talking about. So, we've introduce the idea that work and energy are related. If I have energy, I have the ability to do work. And if I do work on an object, I give that object some energy. So these two must be related in a more intimate way mathematically as well. And they are through what we know what we know as the work energy theorem. So recall that work done on an object is the force times the distance the object moves, its displacement parallel to that force. And we often represent that as the cosine of the angle, where the cosine is the angle between the force, force vector and the displacement vector. So we've already talked about that a little bit. Now work, of course, is a true integration of the force over a distance. We're not going to do the integral part of that. We're sort of going to look at that constant force idea. All right, like we did with uh, the work mini lecture. So let's just think about what forces do to objects? Well, we know that forces cause accelerations. And accelerations are changes in velocity. So a force, we know, causes a change in velocity. Well, if work is a force through a distance, then work must be causing that change in velocity for a distance. So, if I think about velocity in terms of energy, then work must somehow be related to a change in energy. Now, that should sound familiar. We said that if I do work on an object, I change its energy. So we're kind of coming full circle here, but what, what type of energy are we talking about more concretely? Well. If I'm changing the velocity of an object, so while work is being done, if I'm changing the velocity of the object, then I kind of change in the kinetic energy. And that's what the work energy theorem tells us. It tells us that the net work done on an object changes its kinetic energy. The net work, all of the work, all of the work done on the object. So that's a little bit different than we've been sort of calculating work. This is the total work being done on the object. So when we think about an object, we have to think about all the forces acting on it, the work being done by all of those forces, and um, look at that total work when we, when we look at the change in kinetic energy. All right, now, does that work out mathematically? I'm gonna just kind of do a little example. We know that force is equal to a mass, net force, and we're going to talk just net in this case, is equal to the object's mass times acceleration. And we know that work, net work, is equal to the force times the distance. And let's just use, as an example, let's use that force in the same direction as the displacement that is happening. All right, well, we want to keep in mind that D that displacement is x final minus x initial, right? So that's an important thing to keep in mind is the change in position of the object. And we know from our study of kinematics that we have a relationship. If I have a constant acceleration, constant force, that I have a relationship that relates the change in or the change in velocity to the displacement. So if I solve this for the acceleration, doing a little algebra, bring v final squared over or v initial squared over divide by two delta x, I get an expression for my acceleration that reads v final squared minus v initial squared all over two delta x, which we can replace for our work relationship as v final squared minus v initial squared all over 2d as we're doing this description, right? That displacement d. 
All right, so then I have that situation. Well, if I look back at how acceleration is related to forces, well, then I'm going to substitute, or sorry, how acceleration is related to work. Forces, we know, work is a force times the distance. So my work then is my force, again, this is a constant force in the direction of the distance, displacement, times that displacement. And now I'm going to substitute my acceleration in for this. This is, again, the net force, mass times the acceleration, V final squared minus V initial squared all over 2D times D. Well, my D's are going to cancel. I've got one on the top, one on the bottom. I'm going to pull out that one half, one half mass times V final squared minus V initial squared. And hopefully you're starting to see the relationship we talked about over here. And if I distribute this across, I find that my work is equal to my change in kinetic energy. Again, net work, net force. And we use this example with a force and a displacement along the line. But it is a general case. We can use it for all work, um, regardless of the direction the force is applied. When we look at that displacement only along the line, the force only along the line, uh, direction of the displacement. So, conceptually, work should be a change in energy, and, and specifically kinetic energy. We're causing, it's a force, we're causing an acceleration. The key is network. The key is network. And mathematically, we can deduce that work energy theorem. All right, good job.